Hello, my name is Nathalie Lesage of Faithful Living Home. I am a born-again Christian and I post twice a week here on YouTube on various topics uh, that relate to the Bible and God and how to um, have the Holy Spirit with us in our daily life. And so today I would like to talk about discipline training, <laughs> uh, God's discipline training in particular. Now, God loves you and he wants you to take good care of yourself, not only physically, but also mentally and spiritually. And so today we're going to talk about simplifying our lives a little bit. Um, things are getting increasingly expensive. I think we all realize that. And I'm excited in a way about this stick with me uh, for a moment because it is the perfect opportunity to review uh, what food products we purchase and our you know kind of flesh out some bad habits that we have and see if they truly benefit our health or not so when things come down to the crunch um, and you're looking at your budget and how much we're spending you know at some point, there are some things you just got to go, I can't, I can't make this work anymore, right? And that's when you really have to look at um, everything that you spend money on. You work hard for that money. You work really, really hard for that money. And the more mindful you are about where you're spending it and how you're spending it, and how you're investing it. And I'm talking about not investing in, in, in you know, stock markets and all these things. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about investing it in good, healthy foods that support you. Because when your body is feeling better and is being fed what it needs, and we'll get to God in a minute on that, then you can think more clearly, you are stronger, you can act, you can make decisions, you can push forward, you can have a deeper discipline and achieve the goals that are on your heart. That if you're praying about, God has goals for you, has projects, a mission for you. So in order to be able to faithfully answer the call, you have to be running your body in the best um, way possible. Now, of course, please, nobody's perfect. <laughs> We're all humans and humans are imperfect and cravings and temptations and my goodness, right? We've, we've all been there. So it's not about dieting. It's not about restricting foods or anything like that. Like we all need food, period. Okay. And under eating is just as bad as overeating. Okay. We need to have the proper relationship with food. Um, and I think that having that can help us. And I, I'm finding it. That's, that's what's happening with myself. Um, it's helping me having a discipline that I can then spread out to other things as well. So let me give you an example. Um, so for me, um, salt is a main concern. Okay. Now I'm, let me give you a bit of background first. So I'm 58 years old. Um, I am a former certified group fitness instructor. Uh, that was about 25 years ago, okay? And um, I just love to exercise, work out. I feel good. I feel alive. I am terrible at sports. My goodness. You should ask my high school friends. <laughs> Nobody wanted to pick me in school to be on their team, okay? And I don't blame them one bit. <laughs> I really don't. Because I was terrible. It's just, it's not my talent. But it doesn't mean I don't enjoy doing it. See, that's the thing. So maybe team sports wasn't a great match for me because I'm not great at it, but some individual workouts or different kinds of things um, I found to be really fun and helpful. And I just enjoyed doing it for my own self, right? I didn't always enjoy playing in team sports because I just wasn't good at it. 
It wasn't my gift. <sighs> so then, if it's not your gift and you're forcing yourself, it's it doesn't feel good. So why would you want to do it, right? So you have to find what works for you in terms of exercise. We were made to move. How many joints and ligaments and tendons and muscles and things do we have in our body? God created us, right? He didn't create us to sit behind a computer for 12 hours a day uh, or to sit in a car for hours on end to drive and commute and then go and work for so many hours and then we are meant to move but in order for us to move we also have to feed ourselves properly and there's a lot of things out there and i'm <laughs> i come from a background of, of obviously over the years um nutrition as well you know good and bad nutrition but also there's shortcuts in the so-called fitness industry in terms of you know let's say protein bars protein shakes and and all these these things that's not a good thing either it's it's not a, a thing to use on the daily it should be a thing to use here and there um, to help supplement something if you but we need to eat the food that god created for us he created us he knows us and how and what we need specifically so he created the plants and the animals for us to eat so that we would be fed what we need in order to then be able to live the life that he has planned for us it's all linked together okay so so knowing that right of course i i exercise i love to exercise and I would, you know, uh, eat healthier and, and everything, absolutely. And I felt so much better for it. <sighs> well, what happened? Look at me. I'm obviously overweight. I'm sitting here. If this is your first time here, you obviously are not aware, but I have been dealing with multiple sclerosis my entire life. And I can say that with certainty because I know MS. I've, I've been living with it my entire life. And even as a child, I had actually some symptoms and things, but I didn't know what I didn't know. And I was a kid and my parents didn't know. And so there were things happening in my body sometimes or that I would get, you know, symptoms and I didn't say anything or I mentioned maybe something. And then, you know, I was like, oh, well, well now it's gone. So it's okay. We're good. Right. But it wasn't. And so my entire life, I actually had to deal with MS, not really knowing that's what I had and um, do the best I could. Uh, however, and then you adapt and, you know, sometimes you have to pull back for a while and rest. And then other times you're better. But throughout my years, and I've been in, you know, some groups and stuff with MSers, there's recurring themes that kept coming back and at first i was like well i'm already eating healthy i'm already eating pretty good um i don't see the need of following a specific diet which i still don't see the need to follow a specific diet because everyone is different and we have different specific needs and i was going to talk about the salt for me um so just to give you an idea of what i mean by that okay um, salt is my main concern as I don't consume enough for my body's particular needs. Uh, it affects uh, my chronically low blood pressure and drastically. So I'm one of those rare people that my doctor says you need to eat more salt. Okay, but we hear all the time we're bombarded. Oh, you have to go low sodium. You have to do this. You have to do that. <sighs> Not necessarily. And so we need to just get rid of all this, you know, low salt, no this, no that. Stop. Go back to the Bible. Go back to how God created us. Go back to what God made for us to live off. And go with the whole foods. How hard is that? 
there's a great book, you know, there, there's great books out there, but like the whole 30 or, you know, like there's ways for you to find some healthy recipes online. Um, I link to some channels of whole foods uh, on my website and uh, that'll be linked uh, below in the description. You can find the information there and there's tons of uh, great people that share awesome tips and awesome recipes and awesome ways of preserving foods or using foods that you know you might not know how to use but you'd like to learn how to and I do the same thing as well I we learn from each other right and so sorry I have my bunny <laughs> she's under my table as usual when I'm recording um, so for me what happened with the salt um, was I was consuming a variety of salty snacks to help me because you can only add so much salt to a meal until it becomes unpalatable. And I need more than the average person. Therefore, what you might find, you know, okay salt-wise, for me, it seems probably higher salt. It, I just, I taste salt very easily. And so for me, it's already pretty salty and I will eat it because I know I need to. But if you're saying, well, you, this is not enough, you need to eat more salt, I cannot add even more to that. Like it just becomes, I cannot eat it. So I have to find ways of consuming some extra salt um, throughout the day here and there as needed. And I get to feel it. I, I, you get to know your body. So let's put it this way. So um, for me, um, I was doing, let's say, some things like salty snacks, right? I'd have some chips, I'd have some popcorn with some extra salt or butter or something on it, or both, <laughs> um, you know. But the snacks that I was mainly consuming were commercial snacks. And these commercial snacks were baked or fried or cooked using seed oils. And unfortunately, um, well, fortunately and unfortunately, on the one hand, my blood pressure was pretty stable. Great. However, I was in massive pain. And I'm talking enough to pin you down in bed, like bedridden massive pain, on my left hip and my left shoulder. And it was just crazy. And I was like, I know this is not a mess. I, this is not a mess. It's something else. And nobody could figure out where this was coming from why and only isolated to those areas and but still you know i i still had like some pain in other places too i was just generally in pain and miserable so i prayed and i asked god i said you made me please tell me what this means because i don't know and nobody else knows but you know, you're the one that made me tell me what is causing this pain. How, and I want to get rid of this pain. I want to be able to clean my house. I want to be able to cook the healthy foods that my husband and, and, and I both need. And I need help. I, I do not know the answer, please. Right? And so, didn't take long. Uh, it's within 24 hours. He showed me a video on YouTube from a channel I don't subscribe to, and I subscribe to a lot of channels, so, you know, I get a variety of things, and YouTube will suggest other th or other channels. I, I don't know that it was suggested to me. However, he, he brought up, right, um, two or three different videos from different sources that all had the same message. And the message was, Seed oils. What, go back to basic foods. Seed oils. Go back to basic foods. Right? Whole foods. Go back to basics. And get away from the things of man. Get away from, <laughs> right? The, the, the man-made things. Unfortunately, the man-made things, man doesn't know how to feed the body. And those commercial products, unfortunately... A lot of them are not meant to feed the body. Some of them are. There are some great companies out there. Um, but um, a, a good majority of them, they're, it's not for our benefit. I hate to say it. It's not for our benefit. But it's the reality. It's the truth. Okay? So do your research. And um, 
So anyway, so what I did when he showed me that, I'm like, looking at, I started looking at what I was eating because I was like, well, we already ditched a lot of things. However, those things that I was consuming daily um, included, you know, mayonnaise, uh, included chips, you know, and those things I was eating a lot of for to just for the salt and then the mayonnaise I would eat with some, you know, some tomatoes sandwiches with some salt and pepper. And it, I, I can do a fair amount of salt on tomatoes. So that was helpful. Uh, but the, the tomato and the salt was helpful, but the mayo I was putting on was not. So I was causing harm while trying to do a better choice to eat salt than chips. I was putting on the, 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 the mayonnaise that had the seed oil in it. And that was causing me massive, massive pain. So when I saw that, I just went, okay, that's it. I'm going to listen. I prayed. He answered. Let's do it. What have I got to lose? You know? So what I did instead, I got myself a jar of olives. I love olives. I had stopped eating them a long time ago because I was the only one in the house eating them. It's just me and my husband. And... My husband doesn't like them, so for me, I was like, well, we have a tight budget, but I used to really enjoy eating them, and back in the days when I was eating them, I wasn't eating a whole bunch of chips, and I felt better, right? So stop and think for a moment, right? So I said, you know what? The bag of chips and the jar of olives, they're the same price. The big jumbo bag of chips at Costco and the jar of olives at Costco, big jar of olives, same price. So let me get my salt through the olives. I also get the benefits of the olives, the olive oil, the garlic or the pimientos that are in, the red pimientos that are stuffed in um, or the garlic that's stuffed in. And it's, it's a much better snack to feed my body and I will get the salt and I will get the the, the, the benefits of the olives as well and, and the vinegars the vinegar my goodness has been a, a godsend because I had problems with um, uh, stomach acid like acid reflux and GERD and I was being given these antacids you're not supposed to take them all the time but it was like if I didn't take them well I saw a video that showed me that the reason why we get the acid reflux is because the acid level isn't high enough in the stomach to shut the trap that tells the body okay there's enough acid and it's high enough now we need to to close and it's that sensor that wasn't being activated because the acid was too low in my stomach i needed more vinegar i needed apple cider vinegar i needed so i got some apple cider vinegar pills um, supplements from the pharmacy uh, the, the, it's in the grocery store and uh, because I don't really care to drink like a whole bunch of apple cider vinegar um, so and I started taking those and and then with the olives well my salt has been taken care of and so is my acid reflux I no longer take the medication that I was prescribed that is not great to take all the time and that medication was actually interfering with potassium and magnesium uh, absorption from my body. So it was creating more cramping and other things in my body that weren't good. Well, now I don't need that anymore. I'm feeling great. And within the 24 hours that I stopped eating the seed oils, I literally became pain free. So, and it wasn't MS pain. I, I you know, I have some MS, obviously, uh, pain and issues, but, but it's different. It is not the same thing. And that stuff was literally pinning me down. I could not function. I was bedridden for days and weeks at a time. And the odd time, the odd time over the past eight years, I'd get like a window of like three or four hours then I would be feeling great. And I think it was because I probably hadn't eaten 
any of that for like 24 hours and I, 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 I'd get like a, a great, but then I'd stop and take a, a, a break and, and take a snack or something or I'd eat something and then it would start up again. So then I go, oh, I don't feel great again. But it was amazing to get that window of opportunity. I didn't realize that this was, was this what was happening. God showed me. Do you understand the power of praying and asking him what the problem is and how to fix it? He can tell you. He sure told me. And I've been pain-free since. It's been a few months now. And here I am. I have now the energy to come and, and, and record two videos a week to talk about how I made some few changes that are helping me incredibly. Uh, being disabled is hard enough. We don't need to make it harder on ourselves. So yes, what we eat does matter. Following a specific diet and being, being very strict about it, to me, that, that's just not where I go, period, because I don't believe in that. Um, you're hungry, eat. You're not hungry, you don't eat end of story and um if you're honest with yourself sometimes i like yesterday was kind of like oh i'm kind of hungry and it's like no i'm not hungry actually i'm bored or i'm actually thirsty so i felt you know i needed something um so then i had um, a nice glass of cold water and it was lovely and i was good but we have to stop and think is this really what I need or what do I want? Is this right? So, cause we, we, we soothe ourselves with food. We, um, we do, you know, we have all kinds of associations with food that are unfortunately not healthy. Um, I'm there, been there, done that. And, you know, still am and working on this all the time <laughs> with God's help. And that's what I want to bring to you is the message. He's there to help. And so if you've watched some of my other videos, especially like last week's, I've got a series on two parts on the Holy Spirit. And the week before, you know, I talk about having the Holy Spirit with you because he's there all the time. So ask, talk, ask questions. And especially, my goodness, God created the food to feed us and he loves to teach us about it he loves to show us what he made for us so if you ask him he will answer believe me <laughs> and he answers all he answers all questions now sometimes he makes us wait for an answer so what do you do when you wait for the answer what do i do i ponder on it um, i continue reflecting on it and I ask more questions about it if I do. Sometimes I go, oh, I'm thinking about something else related to that. Like, you know, and I just put it out there. And sometimes he just wants us to think a little longer because sometimes we know the answer. We just don't want to admit it or we don't want to face the fact that, you know, we, we have something to work on there. But he will answer. And so, uh, so that jar of good quality olives was the same price as the jumbo pack of chips, but the nutrition between the two for my body is night and day. And I'm so much happier. I am joyful. I like people, some people, I'm sorry, my neighbors, I love you all. You're, I'm sure some of you are going she has gone off her rockers. Like when the weather is nice, I was opening windows. I wanted to clean my house. I was cleaning my house for hours. And my, my husband was like, slow down. You're good. Like, what is going on? I don't understand. I was like, I do not have any pain. I want to clean my house. I feel fantastic. Amen. Right? And I, good morning, everybody. What a lovely day. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. And he loves me. He told me so. And I sang that out loud at the top of my lungs. That is how life-changing that tidbit of information was for me and my body in how I was feeling. It gave me 
freedom from pain. Do you understand? Do you understand the meaning and the, 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 the just how out of this world this is? Okay? And so I will bet you that most of you that are watching this you're in pain somehow or something is not feeling right or you got tummy issues or oh brother i had symptoms of ibsd okay ibs is irritable bowel syndrome and i thought maybe that was even like i know there's bladder issues and there's uh, bowel issues that come with MS. I have dealt with those for about 40 years. Um, well, no, actually, I can go back longer than that. So we can go through to, to childhood. But um, that wasn't it. Like the stuff that I was dealing with was linked to the food that I was eating, the seed oils. So that's a big one. So what do I do instead? Olive oil. However, be mindful that not all olive oils are okay. Unfortunately, some of it is adulterated and, and diluted down with not olive oil. And so that's why we have to be very mindful about spending the money because the money is all... They're going to charge the same. Just be careful and, and educate yourself and search. <laughs> Google is your friend, but don't always take the first answer that shows up on Google. Dig, seek, right? I do have some good resources on my website. So you can start there and it'll give you some information to get, to get going, right? Um, so I would encourage you to take a look at why you eat and drink certain things. And especially given the price of things these days, really look if everything that you're buying to feed your body and your family, if it's really, truly feeding your body the way it, it, it should be. If it's not, then maybe either cut out that entirely or replace it with something else that is better for you. If you're going to spend the money, at least spend it on something that will do your body better and then you won't be uh, feeling so uh, sick and unwell and, and everything else. And I, I kid you not, the clarity of mind that comes, the, everything that comes, it's like I'm back. You know, I have MS. I have secondary progressive MS. That's not gone. But I feel better. And then I don't feel like my day-to-day -day is just a day of pain, being in bed, waiting just to get a window of maybe an hour to be well enough to take a shower. Now I can shower twice a week. Hello, I feel so much better. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, God. Oh, praise Yahweh. So, but not everybody is bedridden by the things they eat. My body is very sensitive and that's fine. However, just because you might not have some really big symptoms doesn't mean it's not affecting you. It's not meant to feed you. So please take a moment and do better with that because that's part of the discipline. You're a born again Christian. You want to follow God. You want to honor him, right? It takes some discipline to be serious about eating healthier for your own body's needs. I can't make anybody else make better choices. I can encourage you and show you how it's affected me, like massively. Ask my husband. It's, I'm a changed woman, like literally changed woman after eight years of being pinned down, okay? And... I'm glad I didn't give up. I'm glad I prayed. And I'm glad I kept asking God. I want to be able to clean my house. I want to be able to feel. I know I can feel good. What is this? What is going on? 
<sighs> so, you know, there's no diet. Just eat plain, simple, basic foods that nourish your body. Right? And just eat the food as close to its natural state as possible. And, um, you know, it's... Like for me, it made a change, a drastic change overnight. And I told my husband, I kept telling him like after day two and day three, I was like, I'm still pain free. I am pain free. And my husband's like, well, that's lovely. I still, I don't feel any different. I did the same thing you did. Um, but now I see over time, it's helping him too. Um, I see it in his, the color in his face. Um, his energy levels, um, I see it because I've lived with him. We've both been disabled severely, um, and he has, um, you know, very severe health issues. So uh, I'm not going to discuss his uh, things here on the channel. Um, that is for him to speak to if he wants, but it's not for me to say. However, um, it is of primordial importance for him to also eat as healthy as possible but of course you know um, we all just want to eat what we want to eat not necessarily what we need to eat or should be eating but we've made some changes over time gradually and he's quite happy with the changes and it hasn't been hard you know it's been challenging sometimes absolutely it's it if it if it wasn't you know i mean it requires discipline and i think that we've gotten too lazy maybe with the sweatpants and the elastic waistbands that we need to tighten up a little bit and go hey hang on a sec i can do better i can make a good choice for my body because it might not feel like it right now, but over time, if you do it a little bit every day, all the time, it adds up and then you start feeling a little better. And then you can start making another change. And then you start feeling a little better. And then you're going, hey, I'm, you know, I've got a little more energy. And it just, but it's the, the, the being consistent and being mindful and having the discipline to choose to do a better choice okay so right now if you're reassessing your household budgets and when you're where you're spending money take out food we stopped doing takeout a long time ago because we just couldn't afford to anymore um and so the odd time you know we might get one something but um any like i can't anymore for most places because I, I don't want to eat the seed oils anymore because what happens, and I tested that, I tested that. Um, I said after about like a week, 10 days, I said, okay, I'm, fe I'm feeling great. Let me try and having some seed oil, like just a, like, let's say a tomato sandwich with the, the mayo, whatever. And it was immediate. It came right back, the pain. I was bedridden. Um, for like a few days the fatigue the extreme fatigue that just came over me was like wow like I hadn't felt like this in a long time because it had been like over a week and I was feeling massively better and so that was my answer I knew so I, the minute I was better to get out of bed I got up and I threw out the jar of mayo and I got rid of all the seed oils container like that were in commercial products that we had. Like we had some, I used to like sometimes having some stovetop stuffing, you know, various, but just various commercial products. And then look at the ingredients. And if the oils that are listed, if the oils listed is not olive oil or coconut oil, you're basically, right? So, but at least don't buy any more. Find an alternative or do your own alternative at home. And that's what we ended up doing, right? So um, we do our own bread. I, I have a bread machine and uh, being disabled, I used to be able to, to bake some bread. Sometimes I, you know, I'm well enough to uh, make some buns and things like that. I let the machine do all the mixing and then I just um, divide the buns and uh, bake them. 
But um, even that before, that wasn't even a possibility for me. I could barely, barely sometimes put in the ingredients in the bread machine and put the pan in and start the machine and go back to bed. It was, I was crawling almost to, to get that done. And it was so hard. But I got it done because it was better for us. And so when I asked God about it, and he gave me the answers in a few different videos, then I said, okay, I, I will do that. And it was night and day. It, it was life-changing, entirely life-changing. So for me, the, the, that seed and that love that I have for God just grew even stronger and bigger and fuller because he took care of me and he always wants to do that and all we have to do is ask he's he's right there all the time and so i i i hope that you take that and that you you try ask him so just you know just make sure you keep everything in moderation right be thoughtful if you're hungry eat right but choose to be prepared to eat something that is healthy for your body, not something prepackaged that doesn't exist in nature, right? Um, and this, he wants us to celebrate and enjoy the good food that he provides us. He loves to feed us. God loves our farmers. And I hope you love them too, because these farmers, they're under attack. I'm sure you've seen that, right? So we have to support our farmers and we have to purchase the produce and the meats and and whatnot so purchase it use it eat it and leave the zombie foods i call them zombie foods to the zombies we're not zombies we're children of god and we need to be feeding ourselves the food that he provided us with so how do we overcome uh, sinful behaviors or habits that are not healthy or good for us? So we have to love God more than pleasure. And I heard it said just like before I came on here and I thought, that's a really good way to put it, right? Because pleasure, um, the devil is all about that. Yeah, like immediate reward, immediate pleasure. Oh, you want to have that right now. Like, you know, if you make it yourself, it's going to take like a half an hour. And, you know, why, just grab it. It's so easy. And as I said in my previous video, the easy button is the evil button easy evil okay simple doesn't mean easy but it is simple and we have to make those simple choices and if we can obey on the simple choices of life for feeding our body that he gave us right so if you love him you don't want to disrespect him right? You don't want to disappoint him, right? God made you. And he said, I made you this food to feed you. I know what you need. So please use that food. Get away from all the, the zombie food, okay? So, but only Jesus can change your heart. And if you're a born again Christian, he's in your heart. So now, can you have a closer look at what you're eating that may be causing you pain in your hip or in your knee or in your shoulder or giving you headaches or giving you tummy trouble or giving you acid reflux? Look, seek, pray about it. There's a, a good verse here um, that I wanted to read. It's Proverbs 25, uh, verses uh, 27 and 28. And 
I it's it's about sugar in a way um, and also just in my opinion food in general but go easy go easy on sugar okay um, we were provided by God with some sweetness absolutely so we have honey from the bees and we have fruits that are sweet we even have some vegetables that are that are sweet and they're very sweet but we have to um, untrain our taste buds from the zombie foods okay and so proverbs 25 verses 27 28 says it is not good to eat much honey so for men to search their own glory is not glory he that hath no rule upon his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls you need walls you need to protect your body it is under attack by the evil side temptation pleasure but it's not fun it's actually quite enjoyable to cook some wholesome foods and then you start to taste it and you ask God I asked God um, a while back because I, I was I love tomatoes I was so disappointed in the taste of tomatoes that I would get from the stores and it didn't matter what kind I brought I, I would buy a variety I did of different kinds of tomatoes and and different supermarkets and and or farmers markets or and sometimes I would just go like it's that there's no taste there's no it's and I asked God I said you made the tomatoes how are they supposed to taste I would love to taste the tomato how you made it how it's supposed to taste to me like how is it supposed to taste I want a real tomato well you know what God did when I asked him that he actually asked one of my lovely neighbors Norm I did not know that Norm grew tomatoes right he, and he Norm doesn't know that I like tomatoes but God said to Norm hey Norm you know what Natalie would could you bring a tomato to Natalie I think she would really love it and so he came over out of the blue knocking at my door and asking me and I wasn't I was ill I was in bed I could not get up and by the time I actually get dressed and get up and get to the door the people have already gone so I I, I, I can't do it and my husband was out at the moment when Norm came so but however <laughs> Norm didn't give up and because God put it on his heart I'm sure and so my husband was home I think it was the next day or something like that uh, or and Norm came back and he went knocking and my husband went to answer the door and again I was laying down I was not well and uh, Norm gives a tomato he's like I have a tomato would you like one and Aaron's like my wife likes them yeah thank you and so he put it on the counter for me and so then I was better the next day or something and I, I saw it and I was like oh this is so sweet thank you you know and I actually ate the tomato it was the best tomato I had ever tasted in my entire life I am not joking and I cannot lie because you know what I mean okay it was spectacular amazing amazing and I would just eat it like an apple it, it was so good so good Finally, I had a tomato, how God intended it to be. And it was satisfying, in, and it had an umami to it. it. It was spectacular. You cannot buy this tomato anywhere. It's a gift from God. Through Norm. Thank you, Norm. 
I have to bring Norm some tomato jam. I made tomato jam, not with his tomatoes. I, I He didn't give me a whole bunch of tomatoes, but um, I want to bring him some tomato jam because I think he will really like it that I made. And, but like seriously, it, it blew my mind. And it's a simple thing, but it is real. And so, you know, when God is telling you, right, that we have to be mindful about what we put in our mouth, there's some things that are for good, but there's some things that are for evil. So it's not just about protecting yourself spiritually, but it's also the words spoken over you or the, the words that you speak or the, the mind, the, the things that are put into your mind by the evil because it's always trying to get into your mind and make you doubt and, and whatnot. And a great book, uh, The Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. Highly recommend. I'll link to that below. Uh, it's on my website too. The... devil will make it so much fun and so rewarding immediate reward or something easy but it's empty there's no substance and substance in it and the ways of the world are not the ways of God, unfortunately, they're not. And so, um, like, have you ever felt like food was calling the shots? I used to in the past. I used to have that problem in the past. Everything, you know, but it's, it's really, um, about choosing to do the right thing that we know is right because God told us what is right. And so there's no food that are off limits to you, but it's up to you to put a reasonable limit on food. So it's not good to eat an entire chocolate cake or pizza in one sitting. It's just not, right? You have the right to choose to do that if you'd like. Um, but it's sure not going to be beneficial. And it's not good for your physical health or your emotional health, for that matter. Um, so, you know, uh, did you know that actually research has shown and... I find it's true, like I, I've stopped and thought about that. Um, it's actually been proven that the first few bites that you eat of a food, a dessert or anything, a good steak or pasta, whatever it is that you enjoy eating, the first few bites always taste the best. So say you're having a piece of chocolate cake that is just sending your eyes rolling in your head. That is just so decadent and good. The first few bites are going to taste absolutely amazing. But after that, our taste buds get used to it and they kind of get tired because they've already had their maximum uh, enjoyment out of it that they're kind of go, oh, okay, it's just more of the same now. The, the, the taste buds are really quick to go, oh, we got a few and, and then we're good. And that's what I'm noticing more and more. It's not the quantity, um, but it's more... Um, Having less, but every single bite is really a delight. And then I'm good and I go, this was all so amazing. And I'm looking forward to having more of that tomorrow. But I, for today, I've had enough. If I had more now, it'd be too much. And so have a smaller piece, you know, instead. Enjoy it many times over several portions. Freeze half of it. Like if you have a cake. Take half, cut it in portions, package it, freeze it. Cake freezes really well, by the way. Muffins freeze well, cookies freeze well. And and put them away and, and just, you know, they're for another time. But start portioning things in smaller portions, just because we don't need a big bite. Sometimes it's just a little bite of sweet and then that's all I need. I don't need a whole piece. 
right? But if the whole piece is there, yeah, I will likely eat some of it. Now I can't anymore eat all of it, and I'll actually leave it sitting there, and I'll just cover it up and put it back in the fridge, my my plate, and just say I'll I'll have the rest tomorrow. Like I literally can't eat more than, you know, uh, than I than a, a reasonable quantity anymore. Uh, so I eat a lot less. Um, I'm not like I'm, you know, I've lost some weight, but I lost weight because I was moving so much for a few weeks cleaning my house, and um, that really, really uh, triggered uh, a, a rapid weight loss. I lost, I would say, a, a, I didn't weigh myself because that wasn't the goal of any of that. I just ended up being way more active than I had been in the past eight years and all of a sudden it was like massive need for calories um, and so it started digging into my fat storage and whatnot because I was kind of intermittent fasting at the same time and um, not not it just didn't it happened that way in a bit because I was just so focused on um, being able to clean and do everything that I wanted to do and not need to ask for help and not wait to ask for help or Oh, what freedom, what freedom. And so, um, you know, it's it's worth taking the time, especially in times where things are more challenging. It's a good time to review everything and kind of go, what serves you and, and, and God's purpose in your life and what doesn't? And then we can start... Um, making some changes right so um all i want to uh, to kind of remind you of is that food is a gift from god and we use it to celebrate to mourn to entertain to fuel our body right and to show love i love to to cook and bake for the ones i love um that's that's my love language um, you know, and to show hospitality and to care for people in tangible ways. So, and the food is very important in the Bible as well. Real food, good food. So, and there's absolutely dangers of overeating just as there is of undereating. But we do need food on a daily basis. And so... You know, the why should we bother and really uh, pay such attention to eating healthy? Well, if we don't take care of ourselves, who will? Nobody can make those changes but me for me. And, and making those changes for me actually affected my husband in a positive way as well. So if you start making a change for yourself at first, it will have a ripple effect just in your mood, how you maybe address people. Maybe you'll have a little more patience because you're not in pain all the time or you're not feeling crappy all the time or do you know what I mean? And so it, it starts with a little change. And like in terms of our body, we can get the odd replacement part. <laughs> You know, some people have benefited uh, greatly so far from those, uh, but there's many that cannot be replaced in the body. And so it's upon us to realize that we're important to God and we're not an accident. And by taking ca good care of ourselves, we have what we need to fulfill God's will for our lives. And that is glorious, my friends. So, are you willing to place your life as an offering to Him? Are you willing to turn complete control over to Him? People want to turn control enough to kind of get into heaven or, or stay out of hell, but they don't really want to turn complete control over to God. And that is where you will reap all of the glory because if you say God I can't do this on my own 
I need you. <laughs> so desperately. I need you. And ask him. Then he's he's more than happy. He's like, yes, of course I'll show you. You have to say this and try that. Now, last week I had an anaphylactic reaction to a squash. So you have to be, I have food allergies. I'm allergic to bananas and that's, I have an EpiPen, you know, so I'm covered and I have some liquid Benadryl and I have all kinds of things to to help me deal and, and buy time to, to help. But of course, I'm very careful with the things that I know that I cannot have because of these allergies. However, I did not realize that squash was going to be associated with my allergy to bananas. <laughs> And um, I started eating a squash that uh, that came in with our um, uh, CSA that we get every couple of weeks. And, you know, it's, it's a food that helps us because we're uh, both disabled, my husband and I, and so we're on a system where uh, we're on very low uh, income and we get um, a little bit of help with some uh, fresh produce every couple of weeks. And it's, it's lovely and we're so grateful for it. Um, but sometimes like there's a, a vegetable like a squash let's say that we would never buy or not order because it's just not something we eat but I decided to try it because it was an offered to me and I figured well I will try it it was absolutely delicious I loved it it tasted like sweet potatoes just a little bit less sweet and it was so yummy and I posted about it and I had some leftovers because I'm the only one eating it. So I had it three days in a row. Well, the first day I had some, I started having a little bit of a reaction, but I didn't clue in that that could have been that. Uh, because sometimes, you know, I'll have like a reaction to some hay or, or dust bunnies or, you know, I mean, we have bunnies in here. So sometimes I get the odd allergic uh, reaction a little bit. So, but the next day, I reheated some of the leftovers of the meal that I had made with it and um, it started causing me more issues um, but again I wasn't really putting two and two together until the third day where I but I was starting to my throat was starting to close up at night I get delayed reactions sometimes at first um, so like when I'd be sleeping all of a sudden, I my my throat would be shutting down as I was sleeping with my CPAP, and um, that's a delayed allergic reaction. I I've, this is something that's been with me for decades. Um, I've had that happen uh, years and years and years ago, with even allergy shots to try to help reduce my allergies, um, and I was having overnight reactions and literally getting into. Uh, anaphylactic reactions and we had to stop these injections um, but so I do have severe allergies uh, but they're very specific and so when the third time came around because I just loved it so much I was like oh this is so yummy and then oh wow I, like my voice and my throat started closing my ears everything and I was like oh no here we go crap and I started looking after I took what I needed to take um, and then I realized I, I hadn't checked so it doesn't mean that you can have everything that is just plain from nature and have it unfortunately our bodies our bodies are flawed massively flawed by the time we're here now um, and you know they're just not able to function um, properly and overreact to things and of course with um, you know the, the issues with my body that I've always had my banana allergy is from childhood I ended up in the hospital I was like six years old um, and uh, because I couldn't breathe <laughs> and uh, so the um, the EpiPen, you know, that's back then was they, they gave me some shots and whatnot to to get me breathing again, but um, so there's some things like you have to be careful, right? So if you try something new, always be careful. If you have food allergies, 
that is definitely something you have to be mindful of. Um, and I would research first. Like I didn't, uh, that was on me. Um, and I would say before now I go and eat something else that I do not normally eat. I will definitely check for if there's any known allergic crossovers or reactions or things that I have to be aware of. And of course now always be more mindful about um, you know, trying something new and then checking for reactions and, and be mindful. And that's discipline. Okay, so it's part of having a better discipline to protect ourselves and to feed ourselves what our body, our own individual body can handle. And so that's why I don't recommend, you know, or anything in specific. It's just you have to listen to your body and you have to try things. Be mindful about it, right? So there's something to be said about diligence and discipline. Um, so if you're taking uh, small decisions to make a better choice, let's say, for your snacks. I'll give you some examples of snacks, by the way, um, because I think that's a lot of people will just reach for a snack because either they need a snack. Like a good thing is if you're at work and you, you, you tend to go to the drive through uh, on your way home because you're just too tired from your day and you're like oh by the time I get home I just don't I just want to sit down and eat I don't want to cook anything I'm tired about half an hour before you leave work have a healthy snack a good one that has some protein in it or some cheese some nuts something in it and then you can drive home and you're not going to be feeling so hungry and so low on energy right? And, and drink some fresh water and, and whatnot. And so then you can go home. And if you have some things at home that are prepared, you know, it's about getting being prepared, right? So that we have some quick meals ideas or some quick things that we can pull. I always keep in my freezer some thin frozen um, raw hamburger patties that we shape ourselves, right? My husband does it or I do it. And so that in a pinch, they can be coming out on the counter, you know, at, at, at the last minute. And I have some frozen buns um, because I make my own, we make, I make our, our buns. I always keep some frozen buns in the freezer and they, they, they're easy to pop out. And while you're making supper or setting the table or getting other things ready, these things can uh, start thawing out quickly because they're not um, huge. You know, and it's it's quick. You can start making some home fries with them if you want to, or a salad. And while these things are thawing out, you can slowly, um, you know, put them in some water to help bring them to temperature, like the meat, if it's in a Ziploc bag or something, or in a container, just to kind of help defrost it, and then cook it. And it's going to be so much better for you than stopping at the drive-through and getting uh, fries that are fried in seed oil, um, getting buns that are filled with seed oil, getting meats that are filled with whatever in the burger, and some, you know, remotely, something remotely resembling lettuce and maybe a slice of tomato and a slice of onion if you're lucky. Um, instead, have a good burger at home the way you want it. Add cheese, add bacon to it, add whatever you want to it, and just make it a good one, <laughs> right? And enjoy it, right? Um, so, but it's, it's our diligence. Like we have to kind of go, I can like, this is me. I can do that. It's not hard. And waiting in a drive through and, and still driving home, you know, it's, it's a choice. Yes. And so, but if we're tired, then we have to go back to not do the band aid thing, but go back to the source of the problem. Ask God. Well, if I'm tired, how do I avoid that? Well, have a snack. Before you leave work, have a snack to help you, a good snack to help you. Because it might be an hour and a half, depending how long your commute is, by the time you get home and, and you got kids and other things going, that's why sometimes we just go through the drive through because you just go, it's easier, and then, I, you know. So just make sure that you have healthy snacks. 
and um, the uh, I have a few that I wanted to give you some ideas with. Uh, let me just see here. Hang on. Mm -hmm. I know I wrote some notes down for that. And, and, and. Uh, let me see here. So, yes, some good snacks that you can have. Um, of course, olives, cheese, nuts, um, some pepperette sticks. Like, I, we get the mini pepperettes, and, like, sometimes I just need, like, half of one, not even a full one, but with um, a piece of cheese and, you know, a couple of nuts, a couple of olives, and it's a nice little snack. It's got a variety. It's like a little mini party tray, <laughs> and I just enjoy that, and then I'm good for a while, and I can do whatever I need to do. Um, you know, you can have a uh, yogurt with some granola in it. You can have an apple with some cheese, uh, a little bit of honey drizzled on your apple. Um, you can have uh, some hummus with some carrot sticks or celery or cucumber or, you know, even like some little um, home crackers or like olive oil crackers are really good. Um, so you can do all kinds of things, right? Uh, if you're looking for something sweet or if you're looking for something salty, just know, like sometimes I really know I, I need something salty or I need something sweet. So just be prepared with some options and have both at work. So, and then, you know, or wherever you are in your, uh, and that you need to have uh, access to so that you're covered. And then when you're covered and you plan ahead and you have that discipline to, to plan ahead, then it helps you just continue make better choices for the rest of that day, right? And so, um, you know, in closing, I just want to say uh, that there's no greater gift that you can give your family than you being healthy. There's just no greater gift. And... Uh, being healthy emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, in every way, God wants us to have good health and to prosper. Because how can we do His work and what He has created us for if we're not healthy? So... Prosper and be in health. 3 John 1 verse 2 Take your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and let's place that before God as an offering. And uh, see where we can clean up our act a little bit. Have God look at your situation. And see what he suggests i would definitely recommend following his advice so don't follow mine um so okay so a few more options here uh so for snacks right so having some olives uh some nuts pepperoni sticks piece of cheese a uh, piece of toast with some real peanut butter or some cheese on it cottage cheese oh i enjoy cottage cheese with some fruits or some baby carrots or some celery, piece of toast, um, hummus with vegetables, uh, hard-boiled eggs. Oh, eggs are really, really great snack. The whole egg. You need the egg yolks. The vitamins and nutrients in the egg yolks are key for our health. The egg is like a perfect food. Please make sure you eat some, okay? If you can, if you're not allergic to them. Um, homemade soups or broth. You know, some sweet options. Um, like I said, some yogurt with granola. Um, Home-baked oatmeal muffin. Oatmeal. Uh, oatmeal is good, right? Um, steel-cut oats. We love steel-cut oats. And we add some nuts and some fruits and a little maple syrup. And it is so good. And I kid you not. My husband is a diabetic and um, type 2, and um, he was maxed out on metformin, 
this other very expensive drug and maxed out on his insulin. And now he has some room because the changes that we made in our food, we actually managed to reduce his insulin by 25%. And so now he has a buffer that he never had before. And that is huge. And that's all thanks to God. Like literally, thanks to God. Because I asked him and God answered. And I continued asking and he continued to answer. And here we are today. And I am feeling much better. My husband has a little bit of buffer breathing room. And so it makes a difference. Because guess what? We have children. We have grandkids to be around for. To be able to participate in life with them. And being severely disabled, the both of us, kept us out of that for the most part. But now, we're going to be able to do more. And that is such a gift. That is such a blessing. It's, it's priceless. You can't buy that. And so I ask you, pray. If you're in pain, if you're not well, if you're tired, and you just don't know what to do anymore to feel better pray to God ask him to tell you what you need to change in your food intake and just take it one step at a time and try it and see and uh, embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him and for yourself so I just want to uh, encourage you to be mindful and have the discipline to want to talk to God every day, to ask Him questions, because it's life-changing. He answers. He wants what's best for you. Even if sometimes we don't know what's best for us, we don't know. But he knows what's best for us. So be mindful and pray for God to help you make better choices for your health. And it'll help your pocketbook too at the same time. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you on Thursday. Be well, my friends.